present The Castle, written by Kim Fuller and Paul Alexander. This week on The Castle, an Olympiad, some sky sticks, and an invisible dragon. Morning, everyone. Hey, to do Good Lord, Bates, you've made breakfast. Indeed, sire. Despite it actually being the job of the eggs and bacon under butler and the lesser middle muesli maid. I have. Sir, may I have some? No. <laughs> no? As I dressed you this morning, I noticed I could not fasten the buttons on your waistcoat, thanks to your growing circumference spilling over your breeches. My circumference? Indeed, sire. You've rather too much middle. Oh, then I'm entirely on trend, for I've heard many fashion experts call our times the Middle Ages. <laughs> And I, Father, have heard many villagers call you Safati Boom Boom behind your enormous back. <laughs> and it's a health risk, sire. My health is fine. I'm thinking of my health. The previous valet at Downton Abbey died dressing Lord Bonneville on the morning of what became known as the Great Corset Explosion. <laughs> oh, dear. But, Charles, you are right. I must mind my health, for I am closer to my life's end than its beginning. <laughs> I'll say, a lot closer. <laughs> Way close. As close as my mouth is to this sausage. Charlotte? I mean, are you? Uh, perhaps I should make an appointment with an apothecary for a checkup. Sir John! Ah, De Warren. And Cardinal Duncan. If you'd like some breakfast, I'd advise you to breathe in. We're not here to die. Have you seen this? Oh, that's a very large scroll. It is a map. Yeah. The latest, most current map of this sceptered isle, set in a silver sea, this blessed plot, this Wessex, Sussex, Caledonia, and Mercia. Oh, look, Anne, Henry, this is our nation. Oh, isn't it exciting? Frillin. Oh, look, they've discovered a little orange island just off Wales. That's a big bean. <laughs> yeah. See? <laughs> now, would any of you care to find Woodstock on this document? Oh, certainly. Um... Uh... Oh, look. Woodstock is between the Winchester leper colony and the bend in the Thames where all the sewage backs up. Right there. Oh. That doesn't say Woodstock. No, my lady, it says... Here be dragons. Oh, the Woodstock tourist board won't like that. Dragons? In Woodstock? Wow! Where are they, father? Can I see one? Can I have one? Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I? There any dragons, Henry. There are. It says so on the map. That's... Just what map makers put when they think a place is so boring or ugly that it's not worth investigating, like Norwich. <laughs> Tis an insult to our whole community, to the scores of sturdy yeomen who live and work in Woodstock. Oh, that's so true. And who I couldn't give a toss about. But much more seriously, it's an insult to the noble, bloodthirsty, patrician class the other villagers look up to with a mixture of awe and wonder. Don't you think you're slightly overreacting, old boy? Overreacting? <laughs> when the people of London, York and Ashby de la Zouche can view their towns and villages named in gold leaf on this map, and all we get is a drawing of a manky lizard coughing up a fireball, <laughs> I demand this be taken up with the council. And I demand to know where the dragons are. Oh, shut, shut up, up Henry! <laughs> All right, all right, everyone, order. <laughs> First order of business is the motion from Sir William de Warren objecting to the new map of Britain. Don't see you at many council meetings, Sir William. True, nameless peasant. <laughs> and that's because, as a rule, I would rather hack my own ears off, fry them in olive oil and eat them with a three-bean salad than subject them to the pompous, infuriating and utterly pointless windbaggery that goes on in places such as this. Oh, that's outrageous! Uh, moving on, does anyone second Sir William's motion? I do. Thank you. Uh, Lord Sebastian de Coe of Locog. <laughs> Knight of the Realm and former 800-metre foot racing champion. I propose we put Woodstock on the map with a town-wide sporting contest on a scale not seen since ancient Greece. Something so huge it will bring all Woodstock's main arteries to a shuddering halt, causing massive inconvenience and annoyance to every single one of its citizens. I like your thinking, Kurt. I think fast. I do everything fast. I won a race once. Got a medal. Ah, oh, yes. Weren't you wearing very, very tight shorts? <laughs> no. Must have been me, then. <laughs> But Lord Co, surely such an event would be hugely expensive. I'll say it would. Now I've got a medal. It would require the construction of both a giant sports stadium and an ugly, sprawling sports village. And how do you propose we pay for this? By telling the king and his courtiers that we can build everything for a relatively small sum, then admitting we made a mistake and we'll need lots, lots more money. <laughs> Once they've committed and can't back out. Brilliant. Oh, come on. That, that would never work. You'd be surprised. <laughs> 
Slow down, sire. I can't keep up. I'm sorry, Duncan. You know, when I'm angry, I drive fast. And this map has made me angry. I'm ready to go to war over this. Or at least write a strongly worded letter to the Commissioner of Maps. That's all well and good, but if you could just... What was that? Oh, no. It is the King's Highway Patrol. He wants us to pull over. Is there a problem, officer? Yes. I'm trying to eat this iced banana, but it's really hurting my teeth. Is there any other problem? Yes, sire. Let me just... Cardinal, would you hold my banana? I thought you'd never ask. (laughs) Much obliged. Now, have you, uh... Any idea how fast you were trotting, sir? Enlighten me. You were clocked at 12 miles per hour in a built-up village. (laughs) Name? I refuse to give you my name because uh, I wasn't speeding. I I wasn't even driving. Duncan was. What? Go with it, Duncan. Three more points on my licence and I'll get a six-month stallion ban. (laughs) Do you really want me to go riding into the next crusade astride a cocker spaniel? Oh, I suppose not. All right, I was driving. Actually, in a few seconds, I'll have a woodcut of the speeding horse and its rider. You see that uh, box fixed to the tree branch above the road? It contains several squares of elm and an artistic woodpecker. I hate speed check woodpeckers. Do you uh, still say the cardinal was on the horse? Not anymore, because like a monoped in an ass kicking contest, I don't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> Right, here's your ticket. You'll get your date for the speed awareness workshop by carrier pigeon. Speed awareness what? Good day, sir. Can I have my iced banana back? Of course. Thank you very much. (laughs) Just off my checkup, uh, what with baits nagging and these games coming up, my last to stay in trim. Um, Hello? Apothecary, <coughs> I've, I've come for a checkup. Go! You'll be here for a checkup, B U B. Yes. Yes. Uh, aren't you the witch woman from the woods? Aye. I be the witch woman from the woods, I be. I <laughs> be. But you can call me Wee Woo Woo. <laughs> and as I'm not. Seeing you in a witching capacity, you, you don't actually get the voice. Huh. So. I didn't know the last apothecary had retired. Yes, I bought his practice. Don't know if you've heard, but health is being privatised. No, no, I, I haven't heard that. Oh, yes. There's a notice about health privatisation outside the town hall. It's uh, by the back door. And so is the notice. <laughs> right, right, so... Uh... Yeah, take your clothes off and uh, put them on the couch next to mine. <laughs> Touch of medical humour there. Right, right, you are. Then I'll, I'll just... Uh... So, what do you think? Well, you are in no worse state than any man of 74, sire. But I'm 49. In that case, my condolences. <laughs> well, at least next year I get a telegram from the king. Right, here's a prescription for a decent moisturiser. And I'd suggest eating more healthily and getting some exercise. Oh, very well. Now bend forward and clutch your ankles. Oh, I thought you'd finished the examination. I have. I just need somewhere to put my quill. <laughs> Best shot. Ooh. No. Ugh. This is. Ow! Ow! Oh, thanks for catching that ricochet with your face, Sir William. Uh, my pleasure. I confess I was distracted by the sight of you both gambling around on this makeshift beach in your undercrackers. <laughs> We're testing Thomas's new sport for ladies. It is rather physical, and we didn't wish our dresses to come to any harm. Well, may I say this sport is a delight to behold, what with the uh, running and the leaping and very much with the bouncing. You think the ball is too bouncy? Oh, is there a ball? <laughs> I did not notice it. Uh, ah, Thomas, there you are. So, uh, what is the purpose of this game? Uh, the purpose, sire, is to reach 21 points by volleying a ball over that net and smashing it into the sand on the opponent's side of the court. Ingenious. And because this sport is played by volleying a ball, you will doubtless dub it... Shuttle sphere, sire. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> Nevertheless, when I see Lord Coe, I shall insist Shuttlesphere be part of the Woodstock Games and that my castle play host to all the teams. Now, I have business with Sir John. I will take you to him, sire. Uh, two. Uh, three. 
Four. No, Cyan. Ninety-nine. A hundred. High. Yep, one hundred. <clears throat> Got to work out. Thomas, this rowing machine you built will certainly burn off all my excess energy, as you intended. Uh, I didn't intend that, sire. Oh, but you said you built it to assist with my diet and fitness program. Yes, sire. The oars are attached to these ropes, which in turn are attached to a large paddle in this barrel at the rear of the device. A barrel I filled with curds and whey, which your rowing has churned into a special high-protein, low-fat cheese. A cheese I invented last week at my cottage. <laughs> As it was invented at your cottage, you will call this cheese... Dunroman cheese. <laughs> yes. By the way, Sir William and the Cardinal are here to see you. Ah, Sir John, uh, what in blazes are you doing sat in that contraption? He's churning his curd, sire. Ah, we'll come back in five minutes. <laughs> I was, I was uh, just rowing, that's all. Uh, rowing. In your banqueting hall? Yes. How novel. Are you training for the coxless pairs? No. <laughs> Quite right, they're no fun anyway. <laughs> right, Sir John, it's all prime for your calorie-controlled lunch. Mm -hmm. Two pieces of lettuce, one tomato and... <laughs> two bite-sized portions of cheese pumped directly from the barrel. How oh, appetising. <laughs> Goodbye, Thomas. You haven't got a Savaloy I could borrow, have you? <laughs> I'm all out. But, as you know, I am assisting Lord Coe in his preparations for the Woodstock Games. In fact, I just decided to rename Castle de Warren the National Institute of Professional Shuttlesphere. Or NIPS, for short. <laughs> well, as life president of NIPS, you'd better attend uh, WUCOG, the committee meeting planning the opening ceremony. I can't. I have to go to some damn fool speed awareness class, thanks to Officer Banana Breath. Actually, his name's Terry, and he's a Scorpio. I mean, I mean, um, I mean a fascist. He's a fascist. <laughs> One to me. Oh, do we have to practice again? Isn't there an easier sport we could play? Oh, how about real tennis? Oh, real tennis is boring. Yeah. What's it called, real tennis, anyway? I don't know. I do know it comes from France, which is why modern tennis still uses many French words like deuce, uh, racket... Lesbian. Right. <laughs> Ooh, what's that smell? Yeah, it smells like, um, linseed oil. Greetings, civilians. Do not be afeard. Henry the Dragon Slayer is here. Shabba. Henry, why are you wearing that smelly armour? It is dragon fighting armour. I have fireproofed it by painting it with linseed oil, which I have also done to my sword. There aren't any dragons in Woodstock. Then why'd that map say there was? Because the map makers are idiots. Or are they? Yes. Or are they? Yes! Well, if I see a dragon, I am ready, and will draw my sword like so! Whoops, the oars made it a bit slippery. <laughs> Sorry, Thomas! <laughs> this meeting of the Wukok Committee is in session. In attendance are me, Lord Coe, who won a medal, by the way, Lady Anne Woodstock, Lady Charlotte, Thomas the Inventor, and a, a short bloke wearing armour covered with linseed oil. Respect. First item. By the way, did you know I came first once in a race? Uh, you might have mentioned it. Good. First item, the official game's logo. What have you come up with, Thomas? This, sire. What on earth is that? It looks like something someone painted on the door of the Merkin Privy. It is the door of the Merkin Privy, dude. I did that during my abstract phase before I got back into figurative graffiti. <laughs> so the design must be in my other bag. No time. That'll have to do. <laughs> Item two, the opening ceremony. It must be spectacular, memorable, and embody the nobility of the Woodstockian ideal. So how about me running around while everyone admires me? Or uh, we could use sky sticks. Sky sticks? I heard tell the cafes of Beijing recently held a games like ours, and to entertain the guests, they invented something that causes loud bangs and unexpected explosions. Yeah, it's true. I ate Kung Pao chicken last night and I'm still recovering. <laughs> Charlotte, I'm talking coloured sparks coming out in all directions. So am I. <laughs> Very well. Thomas, can you make these sky sticks? Uh, sire, you're talking to the inventor of the iPad, which is a sort of pad for wearing over the eye. <laughs> and of Woodstock's best-selling privy cleaner, Toilet Dodo. Well, 
<laughs> do your best, like I did when I won a medal. Any other business? Oh, yes. Father asked me to tell you that the castle is too full. Any more athletes arriving will have to find alternative accommodation. But we still have the Bulgarians, the Swiss, and the entire Turkish weightlifting team to accommodate. Oh, they can share my room. <laughs> Wouldn't you be bothered by their non-stop clean and jerks? Ooh, I'm very open-minded. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sir William de Warren, and I am here to attend a total waste of my precious time. Oops, sorry, I mean speed awareness workshop. Is this the right place? Yeah! <laughs> right it be. So be sitting down in the corner with all the other speed hogs, B U B. Hang on, you're the witch woman from the woods. Yeah, yes, I be. But I also be known as the behavioural therapist from the woods. <laughs> or Beth Wu for short. <laughs> B. What are you doing running a King's Highway Patrol speed awareness course? The government be privatising the police force as well. So what happens... <laughs> what happens at these things anyway? Well, I be hoping to get inside all your heads and changing your attitudes with what I like to be calling... A PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, what the holy heck is a PowerPoint presentation? Ah, see that tapestry over there containing assorted scenes of tragic horse accidents and other doomsday scenarios, B? Yes? Will I be going to point at scenes, I think, have the power to change your attitudes to speed and safety? It be fully digital. What? Means I'll be pointing using my finger. Oh, Lord. People of Woodstock, I stand before you today with Sir William to ask a favour. Because so many athletes want to attend the Woodstock Games, we're going to need a Games Village. But as there's no time to build one... We've decided to use your village. Our village? That's outrageous! We need you all to move out of your hovels immediately, just for the duration of the games. But, but where will we go? Alternative accommodation has been arranged for you in a nearby field. But what kind of accommodation? I just told you, a nearby field. <laughs> weight of authority behind me. He does. And a red-blooded war hero with a massive sword. He's not exaggerated. He'll show you cold steel if you refuse. Can't actually do that, old boy. And we'll... What? Uh, the cold steel. I didn't bring it. What? Why not? Yeah, because that's how accidents happen. Accidents? It's very pointy. You could have someone's eye out with it. <laughs> oh, God. You've been power-pointed. We're never leaving our own! What, what if, what if I rent your homes from you and you all go on holiday? We're leaving our own! Yeah. We're already eight million groats over budget. What's another half million between friends? <laughs> That's very clever. But don't count that money out too fast. You'll give yourself a nasty paper cut. <laughs> Welcome to the Woodstock Games. I'm Billy Bankshot, sports correspondent of the Merc Inn. And I'm James Whitaker, very posh bloke. <laughs> oh, gosh, this is exciting. I mean, OK, the stands are pretty much empty, the whole stadium smells of glue, the PA system is just the town crier shouting through a funnel, and no-one's tested the Jumbotron display tapestry, but still... I just want to get on with our first game of Beach Shuttle Sphere. It looks like we've been drawn against the Saxon team. Oh, how can you tell? From the way they've reserved the court by putting their towels over the net. <laughs> oh, here's Sir William. Hi, Sir William. Cool codpiece. Aye, ah, thank you. In the spirit of the Greek games of ancient times, it is in the shape of an Olympic torch. Yes, I see it burns at one end. Oh, <laughs> sometimes, but luckily I have ointment for that. <laughs> Would you like me to blow it out? There'll be time for that later. You and Duncan are rather late. Yes, yeah, Sir William didn't want to exit his castle via the drawbridge in case he got a splinter. I had to row us across the moat. Splinters are the silent killers. I fear Weewo's PowerPoint presentation has made you too risk-averse, sire. You can't be too risk-averse. Accidents happen. People die every day because they didn't look twice before they crossed the cart tracks. Sire, what's your point? I don't have a point. Points are dangerous. You could have someone's eye out with one. 
And I thought father was in a fatalistic mood. And now we have the grand procession as every single nation on earth passes in front of the crowd. Oh, there they go. Abyssinia, England. France, Outremer. And Zanzibar. And the parade's over. <laughs> what an impressive display. Over there in the VIP stand, I can see Lord Coe. He's got a medal, you know. Lord Coe, would you like some cheese? I'll pass. Yes, good choice. <laughs> this stadium really is quite impressive, considering it was built in one and a half days. Uh, one and three quarters, if you include the Westfield. It holds 50,000. Impressive. Yes, and slightly optimistic, given that Woodstock's entire population is only 527. And none of them could get tickets. <laughs> That ticket lottery was a joke. I applied for two tickets to the decathlon, and they sent me ten tickets to the biathlon. My favourite event. Now, I hope you're going to put some safety tips on those javelins. They could have someone's eye out. Uh, well, I don't think... Those I... spiked shoes are a hazard as well. They could have someone's eye out. I'll tell you what event you're not going to like. What's that? The freestyle men's eye gouging. <laughs> Still, at least the games are about to begin. And at least no dragons will interrupt the games because the Woodstock Dragon Slaying Massive is here. Give me strength. For the thousandth time, there are no dragons. Or are there? No. Or are there? No. Or ow. There are, however, irritable fathers on all cottage cheese diets. <laughs> Before our opening ceremony reaches its crescendo, we must thank Master Danny Boyle for devising the past 30 minutes, even if they did seem more like 127 hours. Yes, I'd rather hack off my own arm than sit through that again. Now watch as the ceremony climaxes with our spectacular show in the sky. Should I light them now, sire? <laughs> This lifetime, please, Thomas. Right oh. Oh, look! The not horror old display of whooshing and banging. Don't the sparks look lovely falling back to earth? Look at how they ignite the glue in the stands, sending flames leaping ten or twenty feet into the air. Is it me? Or is it getting hot in here? Oh dear, I fear the stadium is burning faster than a heretic during a hosepipe ban. Lord Coe, what are the safety procedures? Uh, they should be ready in a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks? The doorway is ablaze. We are doomed! Not necessarily. Stand clear, Cardinal Duncan. What's that coming out of your nozzle? What is this dreadful dark cheese? Well, you learn something new every day. <laughs> well, it seems to be extinguishing the fire around the doorway. Everybody, follow me! I'll extinguish the path to the exit! And everybody, stop running! You could trip and hurt yourself! Well, that's certainly what I'm most afraid of right now. Not! Help! Oh no! It's Lady Anne and Lady Charlotte, surrounded by flames. The stairwell to the athlete's enclosure has collapsed. They're trapped on the second level! De Warren, do something. Oh, I, I... I want to, but... But safety regulations indicate that it would be unacceptably hazardous for me to... Help! Hello! I'm pretty hot! And not just because of this shuttle sphere outfit. <laughs> but on the other hand, I'm sure there's a rule that I can cast all safety considerations aside when there are damsels in skimpy sportswear who need rescuing. <laughs> and if there isn't, there should be. Leave this to me. And sire, you're running. Shut your face, Duncan, and pass me that ladder. Sire, the Bavarian fencing team are fleeing towards us, and they don't look friendly. Step aside, you Teutonic tosspots. I have damsels to say. You step aside. For you, the games are over. <laughs> We have swords, and you have just a ladder, girly man. Oh, ladders are very dangerous. You could have someone's eye out with one. Like this. Ow! Oh, my eye! Have at ye, oh, and ye, oh, and ye. Oh. But not ye. Not me? Actually, I was lying. Ye. Ow! Oh, look! Through the smoke! I see a glowing light. It's Sir William. Yes, he's got a ladder. He's running with it, driving it into the ground. He's vaulting towards us. Ah, ah, ladies, follow me. If you lose sight of me, just look for this codpiece. Stop waving it around. You could have someone's eye out. Come, Sir John, we must dive into your moat. There is no telling how fast that fire will spread. No, no, I must know Anne is safe before Father. I... Oh, Anne. Sir William saved our lives. I held the ladder. No, don't mention it. And I rediscovered the thrill of danger, the excitement of risk, 
the glamour of punching a Bavarian right up the hooter. <laughs> I am now thoroughly averse to risk aversion. Oh, thank heaven. We must jump into the moat for maximum safety. Sir William, aren't you joining us? In a moment, I was just marvelling at how the water makes certain fabrics transparent. <laughs> Hardly appropriate. It is very appropriate, for it has given me an idea for a new sport. The wet chemise contest. <laughs> Finally, a chance at a gold medal. I've got one of those. Father, where's Henry? Henry? Well, I, I thought he was... He's not here. Oh, God, he must still be in the stage. Oh. Henry. Henry, my son. No more. Oh. oh, Henry. Flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood, fruit of my loom. How sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a toasted child. <laughs> ah, it is a tragedy. Though you will, I hope, take some small comfort from the fact that your incredibly fit and lust-delicious daughter lives on. I know I will. <laughs> but I will never forget my son. His noble blankness, his exquisite slowness of wit, the inexpressive perfection of his doltishness. Truly, they broke the mould when they made him. Probably threw it away in disgust. <laughs> He was unique. Who was father? Henry, my son. Henry! Henry, you live! Uh, like, duh. This fireproof armor really worked! <laughs> oh, it's a miracle. The Lord has returned you to me, and I swear before him I will never bear ill will toward you again. And I will continue to defend you against the dark forces of dragonism! There are no bloody dragons in Woodstock! Well, that didn't last long. <laughs> Morning, everyone. I see you made breakfast again, Bates. Twas the least I could do, <laughs> after the trauma of the stadium fire and me not being there to dress you in your flame-retardant inferno pants. <laughs> That's all right. There was little time to change outfits. Ah, visitor. Sir John, I thought you'd like to see the revised map of Britain just delivered to me. The dragons are gone. Ooh! But I like that new picture of bedraggled, soggy people who look like they're covered in cheese. That's Norwich. Wood... <laughs> Woodstock is this picture of a charred field. Definite improvement, I'd say. Sir John, congratulations on your heroism in leading all those people to safety without your inferno pants. I tried running over to the stadium with them, but I fear I got out of breath before I reached it. Whereas Sir John managed to run around at great speed, saving people while spraying Thomas's flame retardant cheese from his nozzle. <laughs> Sir Bates, which one of us is truly in shape? Would you like a sausage, sire? Yes, thank you. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> That was The Castle by Kim Fuller and Paul Alexander. It starred James Fleet as Sir John Woodstock, Neil Dodgen as Sir William de Warren, Martha Howe Douglas as Lady Anne, Ingrid Oliver as Charlotte, Jonathan Kidd as Duncan and Thomas, Stephen Kimmon as Henry, and Lewis MacLeod as Bates. The music was by Guy Jackson and the producer was David Tyler. The programme was a positive production for the BBC. <laughs> We present The Castle, written by Kim Fuller and Paul Alexander. This week on The Castle, an Olympiad, some sky sticks, and an invisible dragon. Good morning, everyone. Hey, to do morning, Good Lord, Bates, you've made breakfast. Indeed, sire. Despite it actually being the job of the eggs and bacon under butler and the lesser middle muesli maid. I have. Sir, so, may I have some? No. No? As I dressed you this morning, I noticed I could not fasten the buttons on your waistcoat, thanks to your growing circumference spilling over your breeches. My circumference? Indeed, sire. You have rather too much middle. Oh, then I am entirely on trend, for I have heard many fashion experts call our times the Middle Ages. <laughs> and I, father, have heard many villagers call you Safati Boom Boom behind your enormous back. <laughs> and it's a health risk, sire. My health is fine. I'm thinking of my health. The previous valet at Downton Abbey died dressing Lord Bonneville on the morning of what became known as the Great Corset Explosion. Oh, oh dear. But Charles, you are right. I must mind my health, for I am closer to my life's end than its beginning. <laughs> I'll say, a lot closer. <laughs> Way close. As close as my mouth is to this sausage. Charlotte? I mean, are you? <laughs> Perhaps I should make an appointment with an apothecary for a checkup. Sir John! Ah, De Warren. And Cardinal Duncan. 
If you'd like some breakfast, I'd advise you to breathe in. We're not here to die. Have you seen this? Oh, that's a very large scroll. It is a map. The latest, most current map of this sceptered isle, set in a silver sea, this blessed plot, this Wessex, Sussex, Caledonia, and Mercia. Oh, look, Anne, Henry, this is our nation. Oh, isn't it exciting? Frilling. Oh, look, they've discovered a little orange island just off Wales. That's a big bean. Oh. <laughs> you see? <laughs> now, would any of you care to find Woodstock on this document? Oh, certainly. Um... Uh... Oh, look. Woodstock is between the Winchester leper colony and the bend in the Thames where all the Sewage backs up. Right there. Oh. That doesn't say Woodstock. No, my lady, it says. Here be dragons. Oh, the Woodstock Tourist Board won't like that. Dragons? In Woodstock? Wow! Where are they, Father? Can I see one? Can I have one? Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I? There any dragons, Henry. There are, it says so on the map. That's just what map makers put when they think a place is so boring or ugly that it's not worth investigating, like Norwich. <laughs> It is an insult to our whole community, to the scores of sturdy yeomen who live and work in Woodstock. Oh, that's so true. And who I couldn't give a toss about. But much more seriously, it's an insult.